So welcome to our workshop. Today this is going to be like an online workshop for creative writing, really tightening up and practicing those creative writing skills. We're thinking about stories, let's do a starter activity, make sure you've got a pen and paper to make some notes and so the first thing we're going to do is look at some words and I'm going to ask you to think about the images, the feelings and the ideas that pop into your head when you read, read these words together. So what do these words evoke for you? And evoke means what images, feelings and ideas do they put into your head? So these words, golden, luminous, radiant and dazzling. What ideas come into your mind? There's no right and wrong, just scribble any ideas down that come into your mind. Okay, you can pause and take some more time to think about this and I'm going to take you on to the next one now. And again, you can pause the video once I've introduced these words. How are these different? Cold, distant, cruel, unloving. How has that now changed the feeling, the ideas, the images in your mind? Make some notes. Okay, pause the video if you need more time and I'm going to move on. How about these words? Broken, disillusioned, hopeless. What images, what feelings, what ideas do these evoke for you? Make some notes. You can pause the video. Okay, so I hope that you started to think about how words, simple words, can create a feeling, an image, an idea. And that's really what creative writing is all about. Let's look at some noun phrases. So remember, this is where we have sort of a determiner, an adjective and a noun together. What do each of these make you imagine? So first of all, if I say a verdant garden, and verdant means like a lush green, a verdant garden. What feeling comes to mind and what can you picture in your mind's eye? What if I say a warm candle? I wonder if you can picture the colour of candle, the flame. What different kind of picture do we evoke if I say a deserted hotel? wonder what images come to your mind of a deserted hotel. How big is it? What's it made from? What does the door look like? What kind of things are evoked for you? What if we move on to a ghost ship? What does that evoke, a ghost ship? What kind of picture? If we were going to think about a story, what kind of story would that involve, do you think? An antique necklace. And remember, antique means long time ago. It's very, 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 very old. Not vintage. <laughs> Properly antique. And what about a fresh croissant? A fresh croissant? How does that make you feel? If you imagine a fresh croissant, especially in the morning, if you haven't had your breakfast, how does that feel? Okay. So it's really important that we choose the noun phrases that we use in a piece of writing carefully to really convey a specific image or idea because it's all about your reader. You don't write without a reader and it's all about the images and the ideas that you're trying to convey to your reader so that what's in your mind really comes across clearly. So now we're a little bit warmed up. Let's have a go at the challenge. Pause the video. Can you use a human emotion to describe the sky? And if you remember, this is called pathetic fallacy. Now, it's just the same really as personification, but it's a special kind of personification. So a human emotion to describe nature is pathetic fallacy, type of personification. So just think, can you use human emotion to describe the sky as it appears in this painting? And then when you've had a go at that, can you use a simile to describe the ships? 
pause the video and have a go. Okay, we're going to go through some sample answers together. Let's start with the easy ones. The clouds swept gloomily across the sad grey sky. There's your personification, or for the proper term we could call it pathetic fallacy. The ships looked like ghosts in the mist. There's your simile. What if I wanted to make this even sort of more beautiful and sort of use even stronger, higher level language? In their grief, the morbid clouds, rotund and grey, bulged with tears. Like midnight ghosts, the ships were mirages, disappearing and reappearing in the mist. I'm saying the same thing, but I'm trying to use an even higher level choice of vocabulary. You can pause the video for more time to have a look. And now I'm going to go through the learning intentions of the lesson. So this kind of workshop, this online workshop today, really is thinking about how we can identify and use language devices. It's thinking about how we can describe images to just build up our toolbox of writing tools. And we're going to examine the use of point of view and tense, because obviously you need to make a decision about your point of view and tense before you start writing your story. We're going to identify character by, um, again, workshopping, sort of coming up with a character. And you're going to plan a story and then write a story. So that's the idea of today and self-assess at the end. OK, so again, pause the video and I'd like you to write a sentence that starts with a preposition. So words like beyond, above, below, inside, underneath, beneath, behind. What can you come up with? So pause the video and write a sentence that starts with a preposition to um, try and create sort of a sense of what we're seeing in this image. Pause the video and have a go. OK, let's have a look at a sample answer. So here's the one I did earlier. Beneath the tall canopy, so that's the tops of the trees is the canopy, far, far below, so showing how high the trees are and how small this is, a winding path led to a small brown door. Behind the door, another world waited for us. I love sometimes starting with a preposition because it's so easy to start all our sentences with the and, um, and it, but how interesting to start with a preposition that really places us into the setting as readers. Okay, we're gonna move on. Think about your story. Where might your action be set? Think of a setting where the main action of your story could take place. Because remember, even though it might read like it has to be in the real world, this is storytelling, so it doesn't. Come up with a list of three interesting settings that you would like to set a story in. Pause the video and just explore your imagination and have a think. OK. We're going to look at some sample settings and I'd like you to write down some words that come to mind. Now, you can write down any word you want to or you can be prompted by the prompts I've put on the screen. So for each setting, um, just take maybe 30 seconds to look at the setting and jot down whatever ideas come into your mind. But if you want to take longer, pause the video and have a look at um, the kind of words that I've said and suggested. So here's an example. You can either come up with your own words to describe this setting or have a think about adjectives and nouns, have a think about verbs and adverbs that would go together. Can you come up with a sound? Can you come up with a feeling? Pause the video and have a go. OK. So here are some sample answers. Here's some I did earlier. So we could have like the golden reflection. So I'm talking about the sun's golden reflection, golden being an adjective and the reflection being the noun. The verb and adverb would be rippled gently. So I'm talking about the water, I'm talking about the ocean, I'm talking about the waves, rippled gently. And then for a sound, I've got lap, 
cooked, the sound of the water lapping against the shore. And then for a feeling I've got warm, so I could talk about the warm water or the warm sand. When we're planning, it really is just about scribbling down sort of ideas that we'll later on put into sentences. Okay, so this one's a bit different. How about this one? What can we see? What kind of ideas can you come up with? What words come to mind? Pause the video and just jot down anything that you can think of. Okay, when you're ready, we're going to move on to the next picture. Now, what if you were going to set a piece of writing here? What kind of language could you use? And a challenge might be, could you use personification? Perhaps you could personify the buildings and the windows. Is there anything else you can think of? Could we use emotive language somehow in how we describe this building? Pause the video, spend a bit of time making notes. Okay, let's move on. So how about we want to take our story onto a completely different planet? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. So let's just imagine what would the rules of the planet be? What would it look like? How many moons might it have? In what way would it be different to where we are now? So we just have to clearly set the scene to show it's another planet. So saying things like the two moons would Im immediately show your reader, okay, there's, there's something new, this is not Earth. And again, if you want to, you can use some of my suggestions for adjective and noun pairs, come up with verbs and adverbs, um, or come up with some ideas of your own. So pause the video and jot down any ideas that come into your head. Now we are going to use one of these settings later on. So take time. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. How about this one? Again, pause the video and have a work through of this. If this were the setting for uh, an important part of your story, what about it? So scribble some ideas down, um, adjective and noun pairs, verbs and adverbs, sound, noun and verb pairs. What, what could you come up with? If you want to, you might even find personification. You might find nature given human emotion. What could you come up with here? Pause the video and have a go. Okay, we're going to move on. So you should be feeling pretty warmed up at this point. So what else do we need to consider before we start a piece of writing? We will really need to get used to making a decision about whether we're writing in the first or third person. So are we inside someone's thoughts telling the story as that character? or watching somebody as an observer and talking about what they're doing. Now we could still jump into their thoughts, but we are separate and we are using separate pronouns. And which tense are we writing in? Is it more exciting to write in the past or present? What do you think? What are you better at doing? So let's have a look at two examples and think about the effect of tense and point of view. We're going to have the same story told in two different ways. One is first, one is third, one is past, one is present. So once I've read this aloud, you can pause the video and really have a think about this. So let's start. Frantically, she tried the lock again. It didn't budge. Already stifling hot, with each breath her lungs burned. Breathe slowly, she told herself. One, two, three. She closed her eyes to steady herself. She couldn't control the panic. Hello, she called again. Her voice rung with desperation and was smothered by the heavy oak door. She was going to die in there. First or third person, past or present. Locked. It's not budging. Already stifling hot, my lungs burn. Okay, breathe slowly. One, two, three. My heart thuds furiously. I'm desperate. I cry out, hello. The heavy oak door smothers the sound. Please, please, someone help. Nothing. No one. I'm going to die in here. Okay, we've got two different narratives. Um, we've got 
a first person narrator and a third person narrator. Pause the video and explore which one do you prefer and why? First or third, past or present? Okay, I think both of these um, styles have benefits personally. Remember, if it's first person, you're really inside the action. You've really got to bring the reader in with you and make it feel immediate. Um, so sometimes first person is quite good. You can talk in the past. But if you do first person present, then it really does feel quite urgent and quite exciting. But equally, the third person in the past tense is quite powerful because we've still gone into the person's thoughts but we've just said she told herself so it shows that we're telling this story about someone else if you want to explore this for a bit longer again you can pause the video but again we're going to move on because these are all just decisions that you're going to make before you start a piece of writing okay choose a character I want you to choose one of these characters and they're going to be a character in your story. So who are you drawn to the most and why? I want you to pause the video and I want you to spend a couple of minutes writing down any ideas about this person. Who are they? What do they do for a living? Where are they? What's happening right now? And do they have a problem? What is their problem? Or what is their motivation? What are they trying to achieve? And that's the key. Your character needs to have a core motivation driving them or a core problem they need to overcome. So try and think about that. Choose one person and one motivation and jot down anything you can about them. Name, age, anything that's immediately important. So pause the video, I'm going to move on and give you the main task of today. Okay, so we've explored some settings to prompt you and we've explored a character. This is what you're going to do, you're going to take your character and you're going to place them into one of the settings, unless you've got another setting in mind that you think would be stronger. Character, you've got a setting and you can use this video to jump between the different um, pictures and images to help you, to help inspire you. But what I really want you to do now is use your imagination. In the exams, you'll be given a prompt like this one. Write a story about a time you or someone you know found something special. Write a story about a time you or someone you knew found something special. So that's what has to happen. That has to be the core focus of your story. They find something special. But remember, what's the problem your character had? What's the motivation? So then explore, well, what thing could they find that would be important to help them in their story or in their quest? What can we do? So you need to plan. And the first thing I'd do is pause the video for three minutes and I would do a very quick writing plan. Decide if you're gonna start in the action Decide if you're going to start with dialogue or if you're going to even start with the ending and do a circular narrative circling back through flashback and then back to the same line at the end. So how are you going to do this piece of writing? Remember to use action verbs to make it exciting because you need to make your paragraphs really interesting and compelling. So when you're in the point of maximum action, use a lot of verbs. Remember, for description, use sensory language to pull the reader into the setting and how the character's feeling and use different paragraph lengths in order to keep it interesting. Everything the same length becomes very, very boring. So change your sentence lengths, change the way you start your sentences and come up with different paragraph lengths as well. So. When you've paused and you spent three minutes planning, you're then going to give yourself 40 minutes to do your piece of writing. Pause the video and we can come back to the video later on because we're going to end with a self-assessment and I'm going to talk you through that in a little while. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, so finally we're going to do a self-assessment. You can obviously send your piece of writing to your tutor. So hold on to your piece of writing. But what I want you to do for today is to self-assess. So what went well? 
make a decision, look through and really proofread what did you do that you felt worked really well for you? And then even better if, what could be improved? What could you have done differently? How might you redraft this story if you had time to make it even better? And then I want you to proofread for your sentence sense, your punctuation and your paragraphs. And by sentence sense, that includes the tense and that includes complete thoughts and complete ideas. Punctuation, have you used commas where full stop should go? Make sure you change that. Have you used some higher level punctuation like semicolons and colons? And have you used paragraphs and made interesting choices in how you've used them in order to make sure that A, they flow and B, they're different lengths each time? And did you, I'm just out of curiosity, did you start in the action or did you start with dialogue or did you start with the end? How did that work for you? Did you use action verbs, sensory language and different length paragraphs? Remember, the sensory language is so important for pulling the reader into your piece of writing. And we're going to finish there. Really well done.